In this video, we'll discuss the tests that tell us how much insulin your pancreas is able to make. Why do we need to know this? It gives us a better idea of what's causing your diabetes. It also tells us if your blood sugar will be controlled without insulin. For example, if you're not able to make insulin, then you have type 1 diabetes, and your diabetes will not be controlled without insulin, so you will have to take insulin. On the other hand, if you're able to make sufficient amount of insulin, then you have type 2 diabetes, and you might be able to control blood sugar without insulin. The reason people have type 2 diabetes is not because they cannot make insulin, but because their body refuses to follow the command of insulin. The scientific name for this is called insulin resistance. One marker that tells us how much insulin you are able to make is called C-peptide. The higher the C-peptide is, the more insulin you are able to make. However, you always need to understand it in the context of blood sugar. When blood sugar is high, people will naturally make more insulin, therefore a higher C-peptide level. If you see normal C-peptide level in the setting of high blood sugar, that means your pancreas is not able to produce the appropriate amount of insulin in response to high blood sugar. Or you can say that C-peptide level is too low for that blood sugar level. Another marker we look at is called anti-GAD. It is an antibody produced by the immune system to destroy the pancreas. Normally, the immune system produces antibody to destroy enemies like bacteria or virus. For some genetic reason, the immune system wrongly targets the pancreas and produces this antibody called anti-GAD to kill it. If anti-GAD is positive, that means your pancreas is being slowly damaged by the immune system. It will eventually lose its ability to produce insulin. Now let me show you a few examples to get a better idea of these markers. This is a 45-year-old gentleman who was recently found to have diabetes. He's overweight, his C-peptide level was much higher than normal range, and blood sugar checked at the same time was also much higher than normal anti-GAD was negative. This gentleman is over the age of 30 and is overweight. The high C-peptide level tells us that he is able to produce appropriate amount of insulin in response to high blood sugar. His pancreas is not being destroyed based on the negative anti-GAD. So this is typical type 2 diabetes. It can be controlled without insulin if A1C is not too high. So we started metformin. The next example is a 15-year-old boy found to have high blood sugar. He is thin. His C-peptide level is very low. At the same time, however, his blood sugar was high. Anti-GAD is positive. Normally, you would expect C-peptide to be high when blood sugar is high, but his C-peptide level is very low. That means he is not able to produce sufficient amount of insulin. A positive anti-GAD means that his pancreas is being killed by the immune system. Also, he is young and thin. His situation is very typical of type 1 diabetes. He has to rely on insulin from outside to get blood sugar controlled. So he started 15 units of insulin lentils every morning. You might ask how did I get the number of 15? It is calculated based on his weight. Normally for people who is not able to make insulin, the dose for long-acting insulin at the beginning should be one-fourth of his weight. His weight is 60 kilograms, and one-fourth of that is 15 units. You can always adjust insulin dose later based on blood sugar numbers. Now this is a 35-year-old lady with type 2 diabetes. She takes metformin and Jardians. Her blood sugar has been going up in the past few months. She was found to have diabetes about two years ago. She has never been overweight. C-peptide was normal, but blood sugar at the same time was high. Anti-GAD is positive. The C-peptide level is supposed to be higher when blood sugar is high, but her C-peptide level was normal. 
That means her pancreas is not able to produce sufficient amount of insulin. And a positive anti-GAD indicates an ongoing destruction of the pancreas. So does she really have type 2 diabetes? I think what happened is probably she was able to produce insulin five years ago when they first found she had diabetes. With the ongoing destruction of the pancreas, she has gradually lost the ability to produce insulin. This example shows you that the distinction between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is not always clear cut. Many people fall into the gray zone, and many people could lose their ability to make insulin over time. Since she's not able to make all the insulin she needs, we decided to start a long-acting insulin. 